Hey, good evening, um, world. Uh, I'm up late tonight. You can see it in my eyes. It's a weird. Okay. Um, tonight, I'm going to be doing not really much of a tutorial because I've already started on my stuff, but more of a step by step uh, verbal how to and then give you some visual aids. Okay. A while back, I said I made stuff out of toilet paper, acrylic paint, and puffy paint for zombie makeup. Um, for Halloween, I'm going to take um, the costume concept that I had at ZombieCon a few week or like last from last weekend, and I'm going to be taking it and going one step further with it and making it better, or making a new one that's better. First, I'm starting out with um, hand makeup. Actually, no, this was from painting props. It wasn't me trying to get all bloody hand. Ooh. Um, no, what happened was um, I was custom making this. This is going to be going on my hand. For a second, it kind of looks like the Left 4 Dead logo, doesn't it? Okay, this is my exposed bone glove. Part of it was prefabricated by my very talented brother using toilet paper and glue to make the bones and the stuff. What I did was I took fake skin, a latex glove, and some skin paint and some other paint or and glue mixture and stuff to go around the outside and add a skin tone to it, add a peeling skin effect so that as the night goes on the skin is going to actually peel off no matter what I do because naturally the glue and paint does not adhere to rubber or latex. Also I took um, some paper that was painted that's still drying and put it over the top of the glove to add a muscle tissue effect if you look closely this is actually going to be worn on my hand I wore it earlier to build it it was literally I made it on me worked all night to get this um, got some blood on the bottom just because well when a zombie is eating a person they're going to get bloody it's a full body experience um, that's going to peel, that's going to chip and everything, but if it survives, it's going on my art gallery. What I used to uh, make the skin was I took brown tempera paint, Elmer's glue, and some um, white acrylic paint and blue acrylic paint. Just to give it the pale effect. That made this stuff. This is my skin workshop. It looks pretty much the same color as my skin. You rub it on the back of your hand, it's going to stick. Depending on how thick you make it, it might peel off like normal skin would if you got a sunburn. And that's kind of the idea, is that especially as the night goes on for Halloween or whatever, you have that stuff on you, your fingers are going to crack and they're going to peel, and just like in the movies, when you have a zombie going through, you're going to have the cracking and peeling effect of decomposure. Um, when I first showed you the makeup and mask I made for my original zombie costume, I had made a face application, including a bullet hole in the head, a bite mark in the neck, and my jaw was exposed. What I did for the jaw exposure is I took a piece of puffy paint, just like this. I took a transparency sheet, took puffy paint, and sprayed it on there nice and good into the shape that I wanted it. It's not perfect, it's got holes to it, it's got texture to it, that's perfect for what you're going to use it for, depending on what you want it. I'm going to lay it across here, just like I did before, and I'm going to glue it or to my face using Elmer's glue. I mean, you don't use latex unless you have money. And frankly, who in the United States has money anymore? That's not even a word that's even used at my school. If you say money at my school, they're like, what's that? 
I'm not joking. Um, so when you glue it to your face, it's go you might want to stretch it first and stretch out your skin because when you talk, it's going to move. This is going to simulate the exposed flesh where the teeth are going to be. Over that, I'm going to have little bits like this simulating gums, muscle pieces, and they're going to stretch across and look somewhat like they're going to be laid across here. Um, what that's going to do is that's going to add depth and everything uh, to it, making it seem bigger. And what that does is it makes it, uh, gives me room to work with, so when I'm working up here, I can take, like, fake teeth that you use dental putty for if you have really, really Hollywood-like tastes, or if you're a simple man, you can take, um, fingernails, fake acrylic fingernails that you get at Walmart file them down to look like your teeth, which I have a clay piece over there that is molded to my teeth. I'm going to use that to get an idea of what my teeth look like afterwards. There's glue inside it, and when the glue dries, I'm going to peel that out, and that's going to give me a cast of what my teeth look like. What I'm going to do is while the black piece is glued to my face, on the edges, I'm going to crimp it in, because when you talk and everything, or not into everything, but... When you talk, your jaw is going to do that, and when it's in the corner of your mouth, that leaves room for the teeth and it, or, and whatnot. And that's after you put on the teeth, you put on a little bit of makeup or whatever glue to get it to stick, and then you start laying over the fake muscle tissue made out of uh, the red puffy paint. Afterwards, use the same toilet paper technique and or skin glue technique like I used on here. And that's going to go over your face liberally, just spread it on, and then use the uh, toilet paper. And what that's going to do is you're going to layer it over the areas where it's going to be, even if you have to lay on a sheet over where the teeth are and then tear it away afterwards. In fact, that'll make it look slightly more realistic. Also, an added feature that I didn't do last time is I'm going to be taking, um, or like I just said with the muscle tissue, I'm going to be taking a piece that's going to go over my lip on the corner of my mouth. So I'm going to still, or just to add to the illusion that my mouth is torn wide open and I'm going to use this balloon that's been coated in red acrylic paint and toilet paper. That way, when I talk, it's going to stretch and, er, and it's going to grip to my face because of the stuff on it. But as the night goes on, it too will peel and have that decomposing effect. Um, so far, that's all I got to show. Um, I have to go buy some fake nails to file down and... I'll do a follow-up video later on. I'm tired right now, and I'm not going to be bothering with the stupid, goofy sound effects, the whole final rest concepts or whatever. Why? Because I'm tired, and frankly, I think some people find it annoying. I'll put it in the rest of my videos, but not tonight. Um, give me half a second. Let me get my materials, and I'll show you good items. Okay, materials commonly used for backyard 
zombie makeup. If you don't like using liquid latex, if you have a latex allergy and stuff like that, or if you just, if you're like me or in any other typical American and aren't blessed with wealth, um, objects you should use tulip stick huffy paint or any other brand um, berry red or just normal red this stuff is great for making this it's called puffy paint it's also called texture paint it's good for writing on fabrics and stuff a lot of people use it for fake embroideries and it, it just gives a three-dimensional effect to objects. Some people put it on their pottery to write names and crap. Uh, then you have acrylic paint. The proper mixtures of... That's red. White and brown give you good skin tones. If you're wanting to go for a George Romero style zombie, you might want to mix some blue in there just to give the graying effect. Um, I didn't put that much blue in mine, granted, but I'm, I'm going to be in the dark. I mean, yeah, I'm 18, but uh, I'm not too old for trick-or-treating, in my opinion. And even if I don't go trick-or-treating, I'd like to get the chance to scare some people. I mean, it's Halloween. Have some fun. Um, then, this is my own mixture, but plasticine clay, oven clay. It's good for getting imprints for molds and stuff. That's what I'm doing with this. And as it dries, I'm going to have an imprint of my teeth. The uh, paint stuff that I showed you earlier, when it dries, it's going to look like any other kind of paint or glue chips. Um, depending on the texture, that's what your fake skin is going to look like. And you're going to need either makeup blending or you're going to need to be really liberal with this to get it to blend with your skin just in case there's a chance that it's not the same color as your skin. Um, that That's just in case, by the way. Don't worry too much about it. And the key to um, backyard Hollywood effect making, um, if you're a type of person like me, and especially if you're a type of person like me, because I run across the same mistake every, every time. Never overthink it. If you make a mistake, go with it, because it might add to your effect. If it's a really, really bad mistake, then trash the project and start over, because these are cheap stuff, and they work really well. Now, this is my palette, but what it was beforehand, if you can see the grids and stuff in it, is when I first made my first uh, zombie mask appliance it's not with me right now but it's in my previous video I'll post a link um, I used a paper plate and I gr put a grid across laid some toothpaste and glue over it adding a cement ish effect because when toothpaste if you use the right kind it dries it looks like cement and I plucked out a few teeth and put it across the uh, factor. What I'm trying to do with this uh, new one is make it more realistic and take away the smiling feature to it and hopefully it'll turn out good. Now before I tried all this um, paint, toilet paper and glue, um, I, I was working on developing a new technique for zombie making and it worked well for temporary props but for mask making it's not that great I mean it needs a little more research put into it here's what's left of my first very first rough draft all my others aren't really available at this time because they're being used for other things is um, if you take plastic bags like Walmart bags a lighter and either a fake um, mannequin head or a skull you will get the same uh, Walmart bags, I, I hate to be a name dropper here, but Walmart or Winn-Dixie tan bags work best for this because they're skin color. When you burn them, it gives that melted, decrepit skin look. And back when this was a whole ma face mask, it covered my entire face, and with the blending makeup and everything, it looked perfect. See? It, it's gross, it's decrepit, it, I mean, even where the handle was, I burnt that just right, so it slipped right over my ear, but that's all it was. Is